Missouri will send to the plate today, one through nine. We'll show it to you after this pitch as Jenna Laird steps in and sees that one in for a ball. And what does this Missouri lineup need to do differently today? Overall, be strong one through nine. Find ways to score runs, whether that's through small ball, just getting singles up through the middle. They only had two hits yesterday with Daly and Crenshaw towards the top. So just being strong all the way through. One of the best hitters in the SEC, Jenna Laird will step in for Mizzou, looking to strike early here in this one. As that one runs outside at two and one. As Laird goes, it's as Missouri goes. The senior, a leader on this team. When we spoke with Coach Anderson during the week, she said, whenever Jenna Laird steps up and speaks in meetings, everyone listens, and that is a leader that Anderson loves to have in Como. They also describe her, though, as the quiet leader, so she's going to lead by example, and that's exactly why you're at the top of this lineup. When she gets on, the team's going to rally behind her and do the same. Gottschall's 2-1 is in there for a strike. A nice painted pitch there on the inside corner. And that was a great frame there behind the dish. Gottschall coming in hard with that inside pitch, and that's really where Tennessee was able to be successful yesterday. Pickens had five strikeouts yesterday. Gottschall, as we mentioned, the NCAA leader in strikeouts. Transfer from Bowling Green, came to Knoxville a season ago, and she has been stellar for Karen Weekly and her squad. The 3-2. And Laird pops that one up at us, and we'll redo the 3-2. Part of the reason why Gottschall said she wanted to come to Tennessee is because she wanted to be a part of a staff. She felt like she was the workhorse, and she wanted to come to a team where she's like, I know another pitcher's got my back, and Pickens was able to do that, and they are so great. I don't know, I would say one, two punch, but really two aces. That one in there, strike three call. The umpire pulls it back. Strikeout number one for Tennessee and Peyton Gottschall. A nice location by Gottschall here. That's the exact same pitch she's had earlier in this setup. She's coming in hard with that curveball on the inside corner with those lefties. So that's a pitch that Missouri's gonna have to adjust to, maybe back off the plate. Those two pitches, as you mentioned, right inside, right, right where it's difficult to get your hands in the batter's box. And this is a young lady that has got power, hits for average. Number 25, Alex Hunter. And she's ahead in the count, 2-0. And I'm nervous I jinxed Honnold yesterday. I said she has a 12-game winning streak, and then she went hitless yesterday. But this really is a hitter that is strong for Missouri and reason why she's in that number two hole. The 2-0. Right there, that pretty pitch again. And Peyton Gotcha will live there all day if she chooses. It's a good spot to place that softball. She tries to battle back in this. Missouri yesterday batted 118 as a team. Two of 17 overall. And that one's in there for a strike. Count runs even at two and two. And right now, Gotchel's already coming off the bat. She is attacking these Missouri hitters, and they have to know that one of her first like three pitches that she's going to throw up there is probably going to be a strike at her best pitch. The two two, and it's fouled back to the screen. Peyton Gottschall, graduate, 5'9", from Massillian, Ohio. Go, three, it's really pitcher 1A and 1B in this staff. There's no true ace, it feels like. As good as Carlin Pickens looked yesterday, Gottschall's got her stuff as well, and she'll work the second full count near to the second hole spot in Honnold. Great look here at Carlin Pickens. She was the reigning SEC Pitcher of the Week a week ago. And she was dominant, just 69 pitches and a complete game shutout for Pickens yesterday. And Missouri will have a base runner early in the form of Honnold. And that's exactly what Missouri needs to do is don't stretch out that strike zone. So immediately right now for Gottschall, she knows she's getting that inside corner on those lefties. Not as much that outside corner. Missouri also needs to be taking those notes as well. Let everything go when it comes to the outside of that box. Now number 11, Julia Crenshaw will dig in for Missouri. 
She had the hardest hit ball of the day yesterday for Mizzou, a double to the wall. Seen the junior from O'Fallon, Missouri, one of nine Missouri Tigers from the Show Me State. She's looking to spark something early for Missouri. It was just kind of they had to find a way to battle back, but when you're down 7 nothing after one, it's kind of hard to do that. It's tough, and that's why you need your leaders to step up. And Coach Anderson says Crenshaw is that leader. She's vocal. She's the one that is going to get this team out of a rut when they are feeling it. Crenshaw will see the 1-1 one in, and that'll hit her. Comes in on the elbow of Crenshaw, and Missouri's got a couple on in the first. And that's just working that inside pitch that Gottschall's been having going for her so far in this first inning. Just looks like she lost it just a little bit. And Crenshaw did a great job loading up like she's going to swing. Comes off that forehand, for, forearm. I will say it hurts, but you got to do whatever you got to do to get on, down the baseline. I'd say that hurts a lot, but she'll take the free 60 feet. Well, I guess I wouldn't really call it free whenever you get hit up on the arm there. And she'll be at first. Down at second is Honnold and Kara Daly to the dish for Missouri. The Tigers looking to do the exact same thing Tennessee did a night ago. Strike early and often in the first. But Gottschall has got Daly right where she wants her at 0-2. And now you kind of got to choke up on the bat. And you got to swing at anything close to that zone. The 0-2. Hit, driven into center field. Kiki Malloy will call everyone off in center and make the grab for out number two in this packed Lee Stadium. All of them applauding Malloy out in center. Second baseman number one, Maddie Gallagher. Get a good look there here at Sherry Parker Lee Stadium. You can tell all the fans here taking advantage of this beautiful Saturday afternoon in Knoxville. We've even got some new seats out in right center field here at Lee Stadium. It was packed as well, but a beautiful day for some softball. And credit these fans, they came out in droves today. Out of the five hole spot in the order, and Maddie Gallagher, the senior from Washington, New York. Transferred in from Wash, or excuse me, from South Carolina. 317 hitter will see this one in and swing under it. And Gottschall is one strike away from getting out of trouble in the first. Gottschall's already started out doing a great job of hitting her corner. She's really working east to west today. So working that inside, outside curve and screw. Big pitch in the first. Check swing. Did she go? She did. Strike out for Peyton Gottschall and the Lady Vols and Gottschall straight. Harrison's first pitch to one of the best bats in the country, Kiki Malloy. And here's who Tennessee will throw out there today. Julia Katsoyanopoulos, a phenomenal day yesterday. She had that big grand slam. It really set the tone for Tennessee for the rest of that game, putting on seven in that first inning. Tennessee put up seven runs before Missouri could get their second out in the first yesterday. And Malloy, she really barreled up some softballs yesterday. Two really hard hits doubles all the way to the wall out there in left field. Well, Kiki Malloy was being Kiki Malloy. She was barreling up the ball, getting some hot hits, had some doubles, two doubles yesterday. She'll see a 2 nothing count in here from Sierra Harrison. And that's where Harrison's trying to go, it looks like, inside and high to Malloy. That was the game plan yesterday with Krings as well, was hammering that inside corner. And you could tell Tennessee just showing off their strength, trying to muscle it up, even when they were late on that pitch. Harrison will have a 3-0 here, trying to tiptoe around Kiki Malloy. The 3-0. And that'll run inside and hit Malloy, and Tennessee's got a runner on here in the first. Four straight balls, not exactly what you want to see from your pitcher in this situation. You can see that this rise ball just got away from her just a little bit. And Sierra, she does so well spotting most of her pitches. 
Now Zeta Pooney will check in for Tennessee. Pooney all, already had a grand slam of her own last weekend in a run roll victory over Ohio State. And she'll see the pitch here from Harrison. Kiki Malloy down at first. She stills bases at a clip that we have not seen before. But Pooney's gonna look to, to bring her home there over at first. You can automatically start thinking that if Kiki Malloy hits first base, she's probably gonna take off for second. So that just puts Crenshaw ready to go and ready to pop and make that throw down to second. Malloy off and running. She got a good jump there. Kiki, 40 stolen bases last season. She's already up to 17 and we just started SEC play. See there, tied for sixth in division one. Didn't see your takeoff yesterday. But looking to continue to move her way up that Tennessee record books. As Pooney's 0-2, that runs upstairs at one and two. And that's a good call with that rise ball. Sierra's going to throw that rise ball often, especially when she's ahead in those counts. She's gonna try to get these Tennessee players to start swinging for pitches that are not exactly in that strike zone, a great pitcher's pitch. Malloy's off and run into second, and that was easy. But Pooty was awarded first base there. That one runs in, so now two hit by pitches. And if you're Sierra Harrison, just gotta calm down, breathe a little bit there out in the circle. Settle in for sure. Sometimes it takes a few pitches when you're a starting pitcher in that circle, but she's just gotta settle in, find the zone, find the zone that works for her. She really tried on that inside corner, wasn't getting the call that she was really looking for. So maybe try that opposite side, keeping it lower, whatever's going to work best. She wants that same call that Peyton Gottschall got on the other side. Now she'll face McKenna Gibson. Three home runs this season for the orange and white for Gibson. And she's one of these leaders on Rocky Top, the junior there from Santa Clarita, California. A big part of Tennessee's success a season ago, winning the SEC regular season and the tournament title. First time Karen Weekly has done that in her time in Knoxville. And she'll see the 0-1 here. And swing and miss at that. Just the third strike thrown, or excuse me, now the fourth from Harrison. Now she's way up in the count though, but when you have a tough time with your first couple batters, you kind of got to think, I'm just going to come after her because you don't want to play around too much when you're start struggling to find that strike zone. The 0-2 looking for first out here in the inning, and that one runs outside. 1.25 ERA from Harrison. One of the youngsters that I'm sure we'll see plenty in the SEC and one of the talented arms that are moving up. 8-0 so far this season. This, her 10th start. The one, two. The one outside. And that was the off speed from Harrison there. And Coach Anderson said it's not gonna be a pitch that they're gonna throw very often. It's something that they're actually gonna set up with. So probably not unless she's way ahead in counts or she's had some fastballs come before it. It has to be set up. You see Larissa Anderson there signaling in the sign. to Harrison and now she's in a dangerous situation. Three, two count with Taylor Panel on deck. And right now, you can't walk the bases loaded, so Harrison needs to come right after her here, and that's why you can't dance around the strike zone when you're struggling to find the strike zone, even when you're up 0-2. 48 strikeouts to 11 walks here this season, and she serves that one up into deep center field at the wall, and what a grab! Honnold out in center, she saves a run, but now Malloy's gonna score all sorts of action here in the first. And what a play by Honnold, but also great heads up base running by Tennessee, but it looks like Zeta Pooney over there at first 
Her knee looks like it rammed in to the first base. We'll have to catch our breath. A whole slew of action there. First off, great grab in center field by Alex Honnold. Here's the grab. Someone dial up sports center. That one might have just nicked the top of the wall. But then as you see him come around, Malloy was tagging all the way from second, and then as the throw came in wide, and yeah, Pooney, that's a tough fall there at first. Looks like her knee just drove right into that base. She thought about sliding, but decided to slide last minute. I always get that, I, I get it. I've had that feeling as well. But it looks like she's still back on first, feeling okay. Donald saved two runs. It could have been a home run. And Tennessee will take just the one. Good to see Pooney up on her feet there at first. Now Taylor Panel will step in for Tennessee. Coach Karen Weekly has moved her up in this lineup, batting cleanup today. And I completely agree. She's someone that's seen the ball really well right now. Not as, I wouldn't say she's up there hitting home runs every time, but she's coming up with those clutch hits, doubles, singles when runners are in scoring positions, and that's why she's in this four hole. She was an All-American out of Rock Island High School. And she'll bloop that one in her right side. Coming in to make the grab in right field is Langer, and she makes the grab for out number two. Two big outs for Missouri. It feels like if we ran that back yesterday, that ball's dropping for Tennessee. A lot of bloop hits, bloop singles for the Lady Vols back in that first inning a, a night ago. Missouri kind of having a chance to make plays today, whereas yesterday everything was just going where they weren't. Now Laura Miller will step in. The junior transfer from the mid-state. She called ETS or MTSU home for her last two seasons. The 1-0 from Harrison. Runs inside, and Miller ahead in the count 2-0. Oh. Harrison was in a dangerous spot to load the bases. But a tip of her cap out in center field to Alex Honnold. And then a bloop out to the right fielder. And he's got one out away from getting out of trouble in the first. And that's the kind of defense you need. Coach Anderson talks a lot about making the routine plays, but also making the big clutch plays and taking risks to make it happen. A clutch play indeed. And Missouri trying to clutch up out of the first, and that one just runs outside to Mueller. And it seems right here, Harrison is just struggling to find that strike zone. She's getting behind on every single one of these hitters, and. You can probably imagine this may be a 0-0 ball game if she was able to get ahead. The 3-1. Runs outside and another free base for Tennessee. Two hit by pitches and now a walk given up by Sierra Harrison. And you mentioned Harrison just can't find the zone it feels like right now. And I think she knows her defense behind her is making plays today so she can settle in. You see there the 13 balls for those 21 total pitches. And when you're struggling to find the zone, sometimes you just got to bring it. You got to put it over the white and hope your defense can make a play. Now the talented transfer, the catcher for Tennessee, Sophia Nugent, already won two Women's College World Series with the Sooners. Trying to make her mark on Rocky Top. The 0 1. Get up, Seven, get up. And if I were Tennessee right now, I'd probably be stepping up to the plate saying, I'm probably not going to swing until I have at least one strike on me. I'd make her bring it to the zone. I got to love Nugent. No batting gloves out there. She'll see that one inside at 2 and 1. 
I give props to people who can do that because I would have blisters all over the place. I could never do it either, especially taking one off the knob. Ooh, that's going to hurt. But credit to Nugent. 2-1 count here in the first inning. Already 24 pitches in for Sierra Harrison. Her 2-1 inside. And the dangerous Destiny Rodriguez looms on deck for Tennessee. Julia Kutsoyanopoulos in the hole. And Larissa Anderson's going to want to come out and talk about it. I was about to say, this is the time where Crenshaw needs to come out of her crouch behind the plate and just come out and talk to her pitcher and say, hey, what's going on? What are you seeing? What's working? What's not working? And try to find that zone. And you can tell Coach Anderson just probably talking to her like, hey, what's going on? You need to get after it. And to me, this looks like a pretty serious talk. You know that Anderson was a little frustrated a night ago. And Tennessee got seven runs in the first. And we're sitting here in the first again, game two. Already one in, and Harrison dangerously can load the bases. One Krings yesterday just couldn't get it done for Mizzou. I'm sure we'll see her tomorrow, and a revenge factor will come out, I'm sure, for Krings. I wouldn't be surprised if Harrison's able to do well today. It may be a toss-up with who's going to throw on Sunday. The 3-1. That one runs upstairs. That one a borderline pitch, but Nugent is awarded first, and Destiny Rodriguez, who is having herself a sophomore campaign, will step to the dish. I think this is also just a little frustration coming out of Harrison because she's looking for those pitches. Those are pitches that are borderline strikes. So just trying to figure out what the umpire is going to give you behind the plate. Destiny Rodriguez has already had some big moments here in her sophomore season. A walk-off home run against a ranked Baylor squad also gave Tennessee the lead and a win here at home against Stetson. Rodriguez, no home runs last season. She's got four, and the sophomore from Live Oak, Texas, in a big spot here in inning number one. The 1-0. That one launched into this East Tennessee sky. Can the third baseman, Daly, find it? She will. And is her glove close? Or they have been a part of 16 straight regionals. It is just a phenomenal feat. Anderson's been a part of five of them thus far, but Missouri's got their sights set on much more than just a regional host this season. The so 0 one runs in and will be fouled back at 0-2. Missouri a part of a stacked SEC, as it always is. It just means more in this conference, no matter which sport you're looking at. And it's going to be a big test for Missouri. They got on a flight after a doubleheader win on Tuesday against Illinois. That's a big rival for Missouri. Coach Anderson said, as that one's a strike three called, Peyton Gottschall's going to grin at that one in a big K for the senior. That pitch was very close. I think Gottschall was even surprised she got that pitch. You could tell she turned... Her glove right on her face, kind of had a little laugh. Or she missed the placement as well, because you could see Katsoyanopoulos setting up on the outside corner. She left a little bit more on the white. Katie Chester didn't like that one. And yeah, that's a borderline call. As number two, Madison Walker will step in. The freshman trying to provide a jolt for Missouri. And she'll foul that one back left side. Nice grab made in the stands. Always got to make you a play up there. Walker quickly behind in the county. 0-2 to Peyton Gottschall. Here in the second. The biggest thing for Walker right now, just a freshman coming in, breaking into this Missouri lineup, and she's a stud with the bat, but Coach Anderson said she needs more discipline. She chases too many balls out of the zone, so just for her to be able to hold off that rise ball is huge. She was Kansas's Gatorade Softball Player of the Year a season ago. Count three, count. Here we go. 
First team All-State to go with it. Batting 250 here in her freshman season, and she swings and misses. Four strikeouts already for Peyton Gottschall. Right now, it just looks like Missouri is just guessing at some of these pitches. I mean, that is a hard swing coming out of Walker right there, but you could tell her timing just a little bit off. She was a little late. Now, someone we didn't see yesterday, Maya Dodge, down in that eight hole here today for Mizzou. She was the Missouri Valley Conference Player of the Year a season ago, transfer in from Northern Iowa. And she's ahead in the count to Gopchul. Dodge already got that first home run out of the way in her time in Columbia. Home run here would tie us up. A nice get back pitch there from Gottschall. She is riding that inside corner to either hitter. She loves that inside corner and that's what she's gonna work. Is she's also gonna use her curveball on the inside and it's gonna almost look like it's coming at you and hit you and then right across the plate. Two one is fouled back. Here we go, Home plate umpire Alex Leap. He'll give Gotchel that strike. And Gotchel is looking to strike out the side here in the second. The 2 2. Strike three called, and she does so. Three batters facing the Missouri's 11th in the preseason poll. They're ranked 11th right now nationally as that one is lined out by Katsuyanopoulos. The well, SEC is just so good up and down. 11 of the 13, 13 teams ranked in the top 25. So when you have your entire teams of the, your conference ranked in the top 25, that's going to give you a postseason feel every time you're playing here in conference play. Missouri sits down, or excuse me, Mississippi State sits down there at 13th in the preseason poll, well, they're ranked number 21 in the country, and they're already 2-1 and one in SEC play after a Magnolia State win 2-1 to one last week against Ole Miss. And now Bella Fall will step in. Her first collegiate home run a day ago. And you know that feels good for her and all the Falls and her family. And that home run she had yesterday, it just put a grin on my face as well. You will always remember your first career college home run ball, and it came in SEC play for Bella Fall. The 0-2 to Fall. Harrison will run outside. And Fall just trying to get things together. You know, kind of struggled early on in the season, but you got to think about it. First time away from home, first time in a college setting, just trying to get out there and get your feet wet a little bit. And, and as you mentioned, I think that put a grin on everybody's face when Foss sent that one over the left field wall and she launches that one. Is it number two? Yes, ma'am, it is. Off the light pole, Bella Fall. What a hit by Bella Fall. Sometimes all it takes is one. Maybe she's getting that spark back. She is back and ready to take it on with Tennessee. A big home run, big home run number two. Get hot, Bella Fall. Two days in SEC play and two home runs. My goodness. Her timing right now is on point. She's taking that big stride step and then just swinging for the fences, seeing the ball so well like a big beach ball. She's coming into SEC play at the right time with the hot bat. She hit that one about a third of the way up that light pole in left field. Watch out, Monica Abbott, her jersey retired out there. She had some noise screaming by that jersey. Bella Fall puts Tennessee in front two to nothing. You can just tell, just like a, a calm demeanor, and she's like, yeah, I crushed that one into left. And sometimes all it takes is one to get you out of a slump. When you're not seeing the ball well, the second you hit a home run, you're just that much more confident every time you step up into the plate. And maybe yesterday, that was her swing. That was her time when she's like, hey, I got this. I can play in the SEC. 
She'll do way to Kiki Malloy in this order. A 1-1 from Harrison. And is fouled sky high back to the screen. And she jumps in front of Malloy here. Malloy, one of two hitters hit by a pitch today. Her and Pooney back in the first. And Harrison just trying to find her rhythm here in the second. The one, two. Oh, a filthy off speed there from Harrison and Malloy out in front for strikeout number one for Harrison. Big K there. That's a pitch you don't see a lot out of Harrison and I don't think Kiki Malloy was expecting that. And she just threw her hands at it. I think she was just trying to protect the plate with two strikes. You can tell she tries to sit, almost crunches up, but just reaches out too far with those hands. Filthy off speed there. I watched that one out of her hand. It didn't move a whole lot. Kind of like a knuckleball will sit there and kind of jag her up to the plate. That was, that was a nice pitch there from Harrison. It just floated, and when you're able to change speeds like that, it's so big. Even if you don't throw it very often, at least allowing Tennessee to know that you have that pitch, it has it in their head that, hey, this could be an off speed. Her 1-0 runs outside to Pooney. And you gotta think, if Crenshaw can, or excuse me, Harrison can get out of it here in the second, Missouri will get to flip their lineup. Nine, one, and two up for the Mizzou Tigers in the second, or in the third, excuse me. She'll face a 2-0 here to Pooney. And Pooney launches that one into shallow left. Stepping in is Dodge, and she will make the grab. But not before, Bella. Nothing new, just come in and play ball. Tennessee got that, those two wins in Baylor down in Waco early on this season. They did have a rained out Clearwater Invitational. They went 0 2, losses to Stanford and Texas, but three games rained out that I'm sure Karen Weekly would have loved to have got. I know Florida State was on that list. Some good competition. Then they headed west to California in the Mary Nutter Classic. The 0-2 from Gotchel. She's been dealing today and here to the nine hole spot. And number 99, Kaylin Linger. All those games that they have lost to earlier in this season have all been one run ball games. So they're playing all these teams tight, exactly what you want to be doing. The only one there, UCLA, was a little unusual. And 1-2 hit on the hands and that one will scoop foul down the third base line. And I've got to ask you for Tennessee, when you see your nine hole spot, Bella Fall, the freshman that has struggled, but then she comes in, she hits a home run in her first SEC game yesterday, hits another one today. What kind of a confidence boost is that for an entire squad? Absolutely, they're hyping her up as much as she is hyped because they know that your nine hole hitter, Bella Faw, a freshman, the only freshman that's in this starting lineup, it's almost like she's looking up to everyone and they're there for as well. The 2-2 to Linger is fouled back to the screen. And we'll run the 2-2 again. That's kind of a tough spot for Nugent. You saw there kind of quickly at the end. This how Sherry Parker Lee Stadium is, is kind of constructed. If anything's hit behind home plate, it's gonna roll back down. You see that netting there under our high home plate camera. It's a dangerous spot on a sunny day. The 2-2. And that one almost took out one of our cameramen out there and down the third baseline. Oops. Get out of the way of that one. Caleb down there in third base. Stay, stay aware out there, Caleb. That's a dangerous spot to be. Give us a wave out there. He's chit-chatting out there. A choo-choo in from Gotchel. Swung on and missed. Strike three, Peyton Gotchel. Six strikeouts. And what a way to come in here in the top of the third. Gotchel going right at Linger. Nice rise ball coming in. And you can see she swung out of her shoes on that one, just wasn't able to hold off of it. The NCAA's active leader in strikeouts is doing her thing today. Nine batters face, six of them have struck out. 
and it almost feels like we, we've talked about it all weekend. We talked about it last week. And Tennessee doesn't have an ace on this squad. Carlin Pickens or Peyton Gottschall, pick your poison, whatever day that they come out. But you got to feel like that Gottschall has got to have that, that older mentality of, I want to be better than the sophomore Pickens or vice versa. Well, it's great when you have two pitchers that are so dominant in the circle because they're able to push each other and help each other get better. And that's how you become great. When you have someone that is above all the rest, sometimes it's easy to become content. But Pickens isn't allowing Gotcha to get there. Gotcha isn't allowing Pickens to get comfortable either. Oh, that's it, three. It's a good one-two pitching staff for Tennessee. It's a good problem to have. Two young ladies that could probably go out and start anywhere in the country. And Laird will just throw that one left side. McKenna Gibson is there. Tennessee's good, done a good job this weekend trying to navigate Jenna Laird and in a hot shot, get up there, McKenna Gibson. It kind of just falls under her glove. And that looked like a pretty easy play for Gibson over there at third. Just like, hey, gonna put that glove up, make a quick play. That one launched into right field. Honnold had the distance. I'm glad it didn't park over there today. I did. So oh no! It didn't get Don't tell me. <laughs> no matter where you park. The 0-1 is. Outside, they do have Regal Soccer Stadium out in the right field distance. Now, balls have been flying out here in Knoxville. Might as well go park inside the friendly confines. And as the 1-1 one -one comes home to Hong, and that's in for a strike at one and two. Gotchel is looking for her seventh strikeout today, and I'm almost speechless up here watching this performance today. The one, two, runs low, and the count will run even. With the way Gotchel's been pitching, she's been hitting that inside corner, outside corner. What I would do as a hitter here is I'd come in and be like, do I want an inside or do I want outside? Whichever one that is, pick a side, and that's the one you got to attack. The two, two. She almost did it again. Right in that spot, she's kind of been working, but home plate umpire Alex Leap won't give it to her. <laughs> And it'll make her work here with a 3-2 count. Coach Weekly calls her the headbanger for a reason. She comes out there, she attacks her hitters, and you can see she has a smile on her face. She's having fun in that circle. The 3-2. That one runs low again. Kind of that ball that it seemed like she was getting called strikes the last couple innings, but that one low there and a base runner from Mizzou. When you see your umpire kind of start switching up a little bit, with what you were getting called earlier. You just gotta adjust to his zone, but also make sure you are throwing pitchers pitches as well. Julia Crenshaw will step in. 22 ribbies, one home run here in her junior season. Missouri mentioned it already today, just trying to spark something. They had two on in the first, Weren't able to do anything with it, and she swings and misses there, and Gotcha one strike away from getting out of the third. In the first two innings, we saw a lot of east and west from Gotcha really working her curveball on both sides of the plate, but now she's starting to throw in that rise ball and change eye levels. You know, too, upstairs, and you mentioned there, kind of changed the eye level of the hitter in Crenshaw. Crenshaw batting here in the three spot. The junior from the right side, the one, two. Ooh, close pitch there and it'll run even. Can you tell Gotchel wants those pitches and I love that she keeps attacking that same spot. She's gonna keep throwing it, waiting for Missouri to maybe take that swing or get that call. The two, two. And now Crenshaw has worked all the way back in this count. 0-2 it was. 
And Missouri trying to get one and two on in this lineup. The four hole spot and Kara Daly, the cleanup batter on deck, the three two. And the suspension builds here in the third. This is the discipline that the Tigers were missing yesterday. We saw a lot of balls that were swung at that were in the dirt over their head. And now you're noticing they're making Gacho pitch quite a few pitches. She's already up to 61. This is already almost at the pitch count that Pickens had within a full game. A 3-2 is fouled off. <laughs> Something's got to give. The eighth pitch of the at-bat upcoming. Crenshaw versus Gotchel. The pitch. And Crenshaw is doing a nice job of just staying alive in this count. And the more pitches see she sees, you got to lean a little toward the hitter and the advantage here. Crenshaw's having a really quiet at bat right now. You can tell she's moving quick with those hands. That pitch is coming on the inside corner. All she's trying to do is protect. Redo the three, two, that one's low in the Missouri dugout. You hear that big roar out of them. They've got some momentum here in the third with two on and two out. And the cleanup spot, Kara Daly do up. And I think this is just a chat like, hey, this is what was getting called. This isn't getting called maybe this inning. Seems like the strike zone switched up a little bit and you just have to adjust. We look to Eric coach Megan Rhodes-Smith. Works with all the pitchers on the staff for Tennessee. Talking with the battery mates of Kutsoyanopoulos and Gotchel. Peyton a lot like Carlin Pickens. She'll smile it off. She's got that confident demeanor about her. She has opened the door for Missouri in the third, looking for their first runs of the weekend, and Kara Daly can put the Tigers in front with a long shot in the fourth. Whole spot in this lineup, and she sees that one in for a strike, 0-1. And, and mentioned it was a big pitch for Sierra Harrison to get out of Trouble back in the second and flip this lineup over and Missouri has had golden opportunity here with those all golds. And what we see here too, if you just take a look at that Missouri dugout, they're in there, they're cheering, they're having fun. We saw it yesterday, dead quiet. So they got a lot more energy today. Love this moment. SEC play is back. You can feel it in the stands. You can feel it here in the crowd. And the one two from Gotchel. Inside, and it'll run at two and two. Cutso Annapolis will ask if she went, and she did not. And this is an adjustment for Gotchel. She was getting those inside pitches. She'll go inside here on the hands, and Daly fouls it back. And when Missouri's stepping up into the plate, they're not even backing off the plate on those inside pitches. They're staying right up there. They're like, hey, if you're going to throw it inside, it's either going to come in and it's going to hit me, or they're going to take it. Gottschall has thrown the exact same number of pitches that Pickens did yesterday, and on pitch number 70, Daly gets all of that one. And hooks it foul down the left field line. It feels like Missouri's got more of a confident demeanor here in the third. The 2 2. Check swing. Did she go? She did not. Scott Mayer said, No, ma'am. And the counter run full. Big pitch in the third, the three, two. He's hit left side and that one will run foul. What I love seeing out of the Tigers right now is how many pitches they are able to foul off. Continuous after continuous having high pitch count from Peyton Gottschall. 
when you have a 10 pitch at bat, you're seeing everything she's got. Also, she's getting tired. The three, two. Launch left side and Daly is seeing Peyton Gotcha well. And it feels like if Missouri can't capitalize here, they've seen enough pitches from Gotcha. They, they might have a leg up on her. Absolutely. The more you can see in and, at, in and at bat, you can just see every type of pitch that she has and you're able to adjust a little bit more. A 3-2, swung on and missed. Peyton Gottschall toes out of trouble here in the third. Come into you at Mizzou and look at them playing together in the middle infield. Those are just the cutest pitchers. You love to see it. Short stop and second baseman for Missouri. And Coach Anderson told us that she she got Laird out of high school, out of Long Island, but as you mentioned, Gallagher. She went to South Carolina because she said she wanted to go far away from home. And then after playing there for a couple of years, she said, hey, I'm putting my name in the transfer portal. And Coach Anderson gave her a call and she said, all right, are you ready to play for me now? I've known you for like the last nine years. Are you ready to come home to Mizzou? Coach and look at that. Coach Anderson was telling us they do the same handshake here in the SEC that they did on Long Island. Just a cool story to hear from Anderson in our talk this week. Kenna Gibson will step in for Tennessee. She was about a softball, softball and a half away from a home run back in the first, but not on Alex. Arnold Watch. A 2 1. Nice pitch there from Harrison. McKenna Gimson, she's been such a stud for this Tennessee lineup. And to imagine, she actually didn't even originally want to come to Tennessee. And she said in an interview, she's like, I didn't like the color orange. So she didn't want to come here, but she said once she stepped on campus, she was hooked. I'm sure Gibson likes the gray uniforms today with just the hint of orange. I'm a fan of the orange, but that's just me personally. I am definitely a fan of the orange as an alumni of Syracuse. The Syracuse orange. The choo-choo in. That one launched right field. Will it get over the right fielder? It will. And hustling down to second with a leadoff double is McKenna Gibson, and she's fired up for Tennessee. And that's a way to fire up your offense when you start here in the bottom of the third, trying to get a rally going for Tennessee like they had yesterday in that first inning. A big hit again, loves that outside pitch Gibson does, and she just sits back, drives those hips, takes it right to that right field wall. That was a tough play to read from Linger. She's looking right in at the sun. But Gibson on a rope out to right field. And she was standing on second, but now number 88, Amanda Allen. Allen to pinch in, pinch run here. She scored a run yesterday for Tennessee. Back in, inning number one. And now it'll be Taylor Panel stepping in for the big orange. And she'll foul that one off right side. Into that Missouri family section over there. Panel 0 for 1 today. I mentioned her last time up, moving up that lineup. And what's great about Panel is she has such quick hands when she's up to the plate. Her swing is very quiet. She's not going to take a big swing, a big momentum before that pitch is thrown. And just last second, you see her hands attack that pitch. And you got to love it for Taylor Panel. Played the opening two weekends last season for Karen Weekly, and then that one will run inside to her in a free 60 feet for Amanda All In. Panel just two weekends of action last year, and then. Unfortunately, had to miss the rest of the season due to injury. And are they going to rule that that hitter? I got my signals mixed up with our home plate umpire. Just asking her to get back in the box. And she'll face a 1-1 here from Sierra Harrison. 
The pitch is lined in the infield dirt, calling off everyone as number two, Madison Walker, and she'll close her mitt for out one. And that's not exactly what you want right now. You have a runner at third base, so your whole goal right now as a hitter when you step up into the box is just say, hey, I need to hit it in the green, in the outfield. It doesn't matter if it's a pop fly, ground ball, whatever it is to get all in home. And Laura Mueller will try to do just that. Mueller's bats kind of cooled off for Tennessee. She had the three home run game last week on a Friday. Followed up the doubleheader with another home run, but since looking for that first hit. She walked back in the first. The 0-1. Now back, and Harrison has got her down 0-2. Coach Weekly said that Miller has started to get into the box and just had a, have a lot more fun when she's up there hitting. Since transferring in and playing for an SEC school, she seems like she's just trying to pressure, put a lot of pressure on herself and felt like she had to prove herself. So Coach Weekly said she's finally starting to calm down and come within herself. The O2 runs upstairs. 2023 Conference USA All-Conference First Team last year. It was all-freshman team the season prior at MTSU in Murfreesboro. He's looking for RBI number 17 on the season. Looking to bring all in in from third, and she will strike out here. Sierra Harrison with her second strikeout of the day. That's the pitch that Harrison has wanted to get called. That's what Gotchel was getting called earlier in this game, and there it is, finding that pitch on the outside corner. Harrison knows how to spot her pitches, and it's just taking a little bit of while to figure it, figure it out this game. Harrison has settled in nicely, looking to strand the leadoff double from Gibson. And Sophia Nugent will grab a bat for the Lady Vols. The Oklahoma transfer with those four home runs already here in her first season on Rocky Top. The 0-1. Runs upstairs. She is looking to add to that RBI total with 18. It would be a big insurance run for Tennessee early in this one. Harrison's 1-1. One, one. Inside at 2-1. And one and just a beautiful day out here for some softball. Yesterday, it was kind of up in the air whether we were going to play two today or if we'd be able to even get in yesterday's game. But see there, 64 and sunny. Got to love this weather as spring is upon us. This is perfect softball weather. And so far this season, Tennessee has seen the effects of rain. They've had so many games canceled. They've had some games changed up. We didn't even think. We are going to get in yesterday's game. Five games canceled so far this season. And that's, that's a lot. Georgia Tech, UCLA, and Florida State were three of them. And Nugent is earned a walk there. Now Destiny Rodriguez will step in. Yeah, you mentioned the five games canceled for Tennessee. Tennessee sets at 20 and four overall. They struggled earlier on in the season with those two premier tournaments in college softball, but has found their way a perfect 12 and 0 March. They've won 15 straight home games dating back to May of last year. Destiny Rodriguez will see that one in an inside strike, 0 and 1. Tennessee came in with such a target on their back. They won the SEC tournament last year. They went to the Women's College World Series. And so coming into this year, it's about making it over that hump and how do I win the World Series? You mentioned those expectations. Preseason number two 
is what Tennessee was tabbed in the early season. Falling back to ninth now, but trying to start to hit their stride. Julia Cutsoyanopoulos looms on deck for Tennessee. She had that grand slam to open things up yesterday. But Harrison's got Rodriguez in an 0-2 hole. Rodriguez is behind on those pitches as she fouls another one off to the right side. Harrison looks in. I always love to see it. Katsoyanopoulos has the catcher gear on here in the on deck circle. He's re ready for anything. You got to be able to change quick and get out there so you can catch your pitcher as well. The 0 2. Just floats in there. I'm going to say she went, she did not. Already 62 pitches in for Harrison. With that 1.31 ERA this season. She's got two strikeouts, but has tried to navigate three walks and two hit by pitches on Tennessee. And she might get out of trouble here in the third, calling off every 74 pitches in now, but she had to work in the third inning. And it's kind of like a snowball effect is what it looks like is coming for Missouri. And right on cue, that one driven out to center field and it is gone. Maddie Gallagher gets Mizzou on the board. It's two to one. And that's that inside pitch that gotchell has been throwing. And Gallagher, she does a great job keeping her hands inside and taking that out, out of the park. It just kind of felt like the momentum was starting to shift for Missouri. They were seeing those pitches in the third. And on pitch number one on the in the fourth, Gallagher goes yard. And that's how you make a statement. You come in, first swing of the inning, and what a way to start for Missouri here in the fourth. Kind of a sigh relief from the girls from Como. They get that first run, and an offense that is not struggled at all this season, just kind of struggled yesterday against Pickens. Has opened up their scoring in Knoxville this weekend. Well, they came in today with a game plan. They said they're going to be more disciplined, and you can see that at the plate. They're letting those balls go that are off. Six-hole spot in the order due up. Number 12, Katie Chester. Grab the bat from Missouri. Gallagher able to cut that lead in half. And Chester, will that one stay in play? Pooney makes a grab! My goodness, Zeta Pooney races in from first base, and that was a difficult one. I love the effort from Pooney over there at first base. So many people talk about, they're like, first base, they only take a couple steps, make a couple plays here and there. But look at that, laying it out all on the line today. Zeta Pooney is sacrificing it all for Tennessee, giving her all, as they say here in Knoxville. And a nice dive out grab to get out number one in the fourth. We've got ourselves a game here, Faith. This is the kind of game that I expected this weekend, that both these teams were just gonna be clawing, nail biting to get a run across the board, making some amazing plays, taking risks, and that's what I love to see. Missouri got that first hit of the day here back in the early moments in the fourth. The home run from Gallagher, if you're just joining us. Missouri's first run on the weekend, and they're going to get a base runner here. Gibson couldn't hang on to that one, and Mizzou's got a runner at first with one out. That was just where McKenna Gibson, she was sitting back on her heels a little bit. Just didn't get her glove down in time. 
but a hard hit by Walker, something she specializes in. You can see just gets tripped up on that back backhand. That kind of seemed a little difficult. That softball was destined, it looked like, to go off that third base bag. Well, when you play a corner spot on defense here in softball, you have not a lot of reaction time at all. And you may be able to take only one or two steps to the right or left and get that glove down. Missouri will change things over to the eight hole spot in their lineup in Maya Dodge. Pinch runner over at first is Daniel Blackston for Mizzou. Gotta love those yellow uniforms from Missouri. Those look sharp out here. As does Tennessee in the Smoky Grays today. A nice uniform matchup today. I'm a uniform guru, I think you figured out this weekend, but they look nice for Missouri. I the said, white helmets. I said right when I walked in, I was like, Mizzou busting out the golds today. That one blooped into right field. Back about two steps to her right is Taylor Panel, and she'll make the grab for out two. I was really hoping this weekend and we could still see it. Number three for Tennessee, Taylor Panel, going, to gump in, going up against number 78, spelled like Taylor Panel for Missouri, but it's Taylor Pinnell. They're spelled the exact same way, so I hope we get to see that matchup this weekend. That would be pretty neat. As Linger will shoot that one left side and McKenna Gibson will see ahead seven to nothing in that bottom of the first inning. Train comes squeaking through here in Knoxville. Out in left field, Julio Katsoyanopoulos will stand in and see that train squeaking on by. She'll see the 1 0 here from Harrison. And on the inside, 2 0. Katsuyanopoulos, what I've kind of noticed, it's not exactly the same, but Juan Soto, who now plays for the New York Yankees, kind of with that little shuffle after she'll see a pitch in. I'm no partial to any Major League Baseball team, but I wish the Yankees the best this season. The 2 0. See there, kind of that little shuffle forward. And every hitter has kind of their own tweaks, their routine. Every time they come up to bat, they may do the exact same thing. The 2 1. Runs outside. You mentioned kind of do the same thing. I feel like all athletes are kind of creatures of habit. You kind of want the same thing, and especially players that play the dirt sports, baseball and softball. They are they like things a certain way. I've noticed. There's a lot of superstitions on this team too. I know for Tennessee, people like Keegan Malloy have talked about. I gotta put my clothes on exactly the same every single time. My sock, left sock, right sock, pants, and so forth. Malloy will be on deck, but before her, Bella Fall will step in, number 22, hit home run number two in two games in SEC play, and this one had destination plans for that train track. And right before our eyes, we are seeing Bella Faw start to grow into our own here for Tennessee. Two big hits, two home runs, sometimes it only takes one, and then you're able to get into your groove. Go back down to first and cut Soyanopoulos gets back in. Coming into today's game. Or into yesterday's game, Bella Fogg just had the one hit. Now she has three, and two of them are home runs. And she'll wave by that one at 0-2. It's a dangerous spot to navigate for Sierra Harrison. After Kutsoyanopoulos drew a walk, Fah, who's batting a red-hot bat, Malloy on deck. 
And the foul will foul that one off to the right side. I always say some of the toughest hitting is once you hit a big home run to come back and relax and say, I just need a single right through the middle. Sometimes you come up there, you want to have the big swing. So just settling in and making contact with the ball. Just pass the baton, and there's no one better to pass it to for Tennessee than Kiki Malloy. Only on deck, those 63 career home runs. She put that crown on her head this season, getting the Tennessee all-time home run record. And you saw a senior look at freshman here. The one, two, fall rolls over that one. This could be two from a zoo. They'll go two second. Cut so Annopolis can't get there in time. And a nice turn there from the shortstop in Laird for out one. And that was almost too slow, um, which is probably better for Tennessee. So that that so going number nine, Jenna Laird over at shortstop making that play. Laird, a great shortstop, not exactly where you want to hit it. Listen to this stat line. She saves, on average, 3.4 runs per game. What more could you ask for out of your shortstop? That's um, impressive. Absolutely. Any ball that's coming her way, she's going to get there. She has that type of attitude. And I think it's really cool from her there as we saw the pictures with her and Maddie Gallagher. You kind of have that trust to your left, up the middle. And you saw there, they've been making, trying to make that turn all their whole career. Able to get the one out there in the fourth. And Kiki Malloy strides in for Tennessee and sees a strike there. Malloy hit by a pitch in the first, struck out in the second. And that 429 batting average, three Lady Balls over 400 this season, and a big strike there from Harrison. She's ahead in the count. Can Kiki Malloy go over 25 home runs this season? Well, it just keeps getting better. She's getting better each and every season. We talked about it yesterday where her focus is just getting a quarter of an inch better each day. When you are so good, sometimes it's hard to make those big improvements. But she's really been working on her discipline. She knows she's not going to get many good pitches, so she's like, whichever great pitch I'm going to get, that's the one i got to go for. If teams didn't know who Kiki Malloy was last season, of course they know now. And she'll see the one shoot in here, and that one will run in on the hands, and she'll be awarded first base. Just get on base, and that's what Kiki Malloy does well for Tennessee. It's on base and clip of 5.33. And it looks like Harrison maybe arguing that one a little bit, saying maybe Kiki Malloy was over the plate, but I don't think she was. I can right there with you, partner. Kept those hands in. And Anderson knows this is a big part Missouri had all the momentum with them after the home run by Gallagher to cut the lead in half. And now Tennessee trying to add to that 2-1 lead in the fourth. If there's someone that's laying it on the line today, that's Zeta Pooney. And you will see this one in right down the pipe from Harrison. She's in front in the count 0-1. Pooney hit by a pitch back in the first. And a little shaken up after diving back into first base. A little shaken up after that diving grab earlier this inning. The 0-1 runs outside. Pooney here in her senior campaign. Six home runs to 18 ribbies. For the 2024 grab. The pitch. Inside. It's a big batter for Sierra Harrison. And this is really the part of the lineup that's been doing all the damage, just starting out with Kiki Malloy, Pooney, McKenna Gibson. You can tell Anderson's coming out. 
Maybe give a little pep talk to Harrison here or game plan. Harrison supporting the yellow color today, liking those kicks. Someone warming up down that right field line for Missouri. It's the sophomore from Tunas, Missouri, Lily Witten. Tennessee also had some rumblings in their bullpen. With Carlin Pickens warming between innings. I wouldn't be surprised if Gottschall got in any trouble today. Pickens wouldn't come in to close it out because she honestly owned this Missouri lineup. Efficiently did it with 69 pitches. Just another day at the office from Pickens. The 2-1 to Pooney is launched. Right field back at the track at the wall and the grab is made by Linger and then the throw in will stay on the infield and a long out number two for Missouri. And that was a great snag by Jenna Laird on that cutoff because you can see that ball was overthrown to Maddie Gallagher at second base. Right there with that catch, the throw over to second to Maddie Gallagher, thrown over her head. Jenna Laird, look at her moving her feet, catches that ball. If that ball gets by, that's two runs scored. A great call. And a great grab made by Linger in right. You can kind of see her go back, fill for that wall, and then say, all right, I've got it. And Missouri trying to get out of trouble again in the fourth. They've kind of tiptoed around Tennessee all day, it feels like. But they have gotten it done when it means the most. Trying to strain a couple runners in scoring position. In the fourth, for the 83rd pitch in from Harrison. Runs inside to Gibson at 2-0. And right now you see Missouri's offense, they're actually playing deep in the infield. And that could just be a testament to McKenna Gibson's power, but also they gotta realize that you have a runner over at third base. And that's who you have to worry about with Bella Faw. The 2-0. Runs outside, Taylor Panel looming on deck for Tennessee. In the last three games, Tennessee has three home runs. Excuse me, in their last four games. Two grand slams against Ohio State last weekend, one yesterday. And Harrison is close to walking the bases loaded, and she'll do so. Bases are juiced full of balls. Fall at third, Malloy at second, Gibson at first, and Taylor Panel. Grab a bat, look to extend Tennessee's two to one lead. I don't think that walk was a bad idea. You have two outs, now you can make a play anywhere you need to. That went upstairs and now Harrison's starting to struggle finding that zone again. Now thinking back, that's probably why the defense is playing deep because they do have two outs. The whole goal is just to get the out of first. Bases filled with Lady Vols. The 1-0 upstairs in that six straight outside of the zone for Sierra Harrison. And Crenshaw will come out to chat with her. And this is a great call by Crenshaw to come out and chat and be like, hey, I got you. We got to go after these hitters. You have the bases loaded. And trust your defense. Two out, two out count. She gets a good strike in there, now two and one. And you can tell that pitch panel wasn't even planning on swinging, but she just took it, got the timing down. She's ahead in the count. So she's looking for her pitch. 
2-1. Kind of an emergency hack there. 2-2. Two -two. Now Harrison can get out of it in the fourth. Missouri will have one, two, and three due up. This the biggest spot in this game. Pitch. This is why these two ladies go to SEC schools to be in moments like this. Game two in a series. Tennessee's looking to wrap up a series win this weekend. Missouri looking to get back to their winning ways and send it to a game three tomorrow. These are the type of moments that you just love to be in as a softball player. 2-2. Two -two. Just tipped that one to stay alive. And that was a great protection swing by a panel. It was an off speed, something you don't see a lot from Harrison. But she was just able to sit back, just get a tip of it, at least foul it off, even if you know you're not going to have a strong hitter. Right? You can feel the tension building. On pitch 92, that one is launched out of play down the right field line. Panel is forcing. Harrison to throw that pitch to her. She wants a juicy one. And that's why she keeps fouling it off. Like, hey, maybe this isn't exactly the pitch I want, but just being able to foul off and make Harrison bring it on the right. As the pitches continue to go by, the pressure adds. The 2-2. Two -two. That one will just sneak out of play. A reset for you. Bella Fall at third. Kiki Malloy at second. McKinney Gibson at first. Game two of the SEC played for Tennessee. Game number five for Missouri. Something's got to give in the fourth. Ninth pitch of the at bat from Sierra Harrison. As upstairs and panel has worked all the way back to full. And Harrison can walk in a run here or get her girls back in the dugout. It's only been nine pitches, but it feels a lot longer with, than that with the tension, the pressure that is out here on this field. Bases loaded in the fourth, the three two. Launched left field and Tennessee's done it again. Grand slam and back to back days. This time it's Taylor Panel. What a swing, what a way to break it open by Panel for Tennessee. That is how you jump out on top. Bases loaded. She battled during that at bat. Ten pitches. She saw everything that Harrison had and she was able to take that one over. Tennessee has came up clutch all weekend, and Taylor Panel delivers. Do your dance, Tennessee. They lead six to one. I love the dancing out in the fans right now. But what a swing again, so quiet, just gets her hands through, doesn't even do much. That just shows you how much power Panel has and is able to carry that pitch. And you've got to credit Karen Weekly. She moved her up in the lineup, and when her time was called, she hit that grand slam to put Tennessee in front six to one. And we'll have a new pitcher in the circle for Missouri. We'll take a break. Tennessee with another grand slam. They that she wanted, but overall I thought she did pretty well against Tennessee. We could see her tomorrow. And in softball, you can bring them back in too. So Missouri, who's got an offense, who is trying to get hot here today. Been hot all season. And get Mizzou back in this one. A 1 0 to Lauren Miller, and that one is in there for a strike one and one. Witten hasn't seen too much action this year, but it's really been two years since she's pitched competitively. She was injured in high school, she actually had a nerve displacement in her elbow, so Coach Anderson just really working to try to get her back, throwing them moments where she can be successful. 
you know that's kind of got to be difficult for a youngster having something like that done, but then you come in and play for a Power 5 program, and good to see Winton back in the circle for Mizzou. She did redshirt last season, as we spoke about. Now in her fourth appearance this season, and she gets a big strike out there for Missouri, but not before. All season, and these two complement each other so well. That's a great point. They really do complement each other well. You have Pickens who's going to come in. She's going to throw heat, throw a lot of speed, and then you have Gottschall coming in, and she's going to throw a lot of spin. Gottschall will field her position nicely there, just jabs out at that one and gets out number one. Oh, and did we mention they can also play some defense? Tennessee has done it all this weekend. And you know this is hard with the reaction time, but that one... Gottschall fortunately gets, his the gets the bounce, but then builds that position to get out one. Missouri's got that top third of the lineup. Now in the two hole spot. Alex Honnold has made the best play we've seen all weekend on the defensive side with a web gym out in center. She's reached base twice today. You see there with those two base on, base on balls. The 2-0. Downstairs in for a strike at 2-1. And, and how long do you think that leash is for Peyton Gottschall? I know softball pitch count doesn't mean a whole lot, but up to now 91, and you've got a fresh arm in Pickens with just 69 yesterday. Right now, I think her leash is a little longer than probably what it was an inning ago. Since Tennessee was able to put up five runs, so up six to one right now, I think I would play around. If she gives up a few, okay, maybe when we start getting closer, maybe six to four, then maybe I'd probably make the switch. And that one runs low. Gotchel is kind of getting the thing that Carlin Pickens got yesterday. Your team goes out there and puts some runs up on the board for you, and you can Pitch a little bit more freely, but out in the dugout comes Megan Rhodes-Smith for Tennessee. Second time we've seen her out there, and she'll chat with Kutsoyanopoulos and Gotchel. I think she's just telling her here, all right, let's go. You allowed the one walk. Absolutely, just saying, hey, settle in. Let's find your pitches, what's working. And there may be some action in the bullpen. Really hard to see the bullpen from us up here in the booth. And I believe this is Peyton Gotchell's game. And when you're able to look in there and see no one over. Now your team's got that confidence in you. She's pitching a gym today. Seven strikeouts, four walks given up, but she's worked around them. Four and a third innings. And one blemish on that, Maddie Gallagher home run. And Gallagher is due up fourth this inning. So Missouri looking to answer. And that one blooped in. Bella Faw is there, and she'll make the grab for the second out of the fifth. You can just see the confidence coming off of Fa. What she's doing on offensively is also carrying over defensively. You can just see it. She's walking with a little bit of a, a swagger to her, I like to say. You took exactly what I was going to say. Kind of that swag out there for Bella Fa. And you love having that when you're a freshman. Kind of jolt that career for you in the college ranks. The 1-0. I'm going to get away, Gotchel, but Mueller's there. Kara Daly due up here in the cleanup spot. And you know Coach Anderson wants to get her on because of the dangerous Maddie Gallagher. Just left of the on-deck circle. Had that solo blast. 
and the lone run to put Missouri on the board. That one runs inside, and Gottschall is dangerously close to that fifth walk of today. Daly's a player that is also a major leader for this Missouri team. So when she goes, the team's gonna go, but also Coach Anderson said she struggles, that when she's struggling, her leadership goes down. And that one runs inside and low. And now Maddie Gallagher will step. Looking for home run number two on the day would be home run number three. And I know we're sitting here teeing her up for a home run, but you know that Coach Anderson just wants another hit. Just get on base and get that momentum flipped back over to the Tigers. And pitch 102 is in for a strike, and Gotchel is battled back here in the fifth. Looking to add to that 7K total. Stomping around here in Knoxville. The 0-2 is outside. Steal your count, baby. Steal your count. Gallagher, the 323 hitter. I heard three, I heard. In her senior season. Oh. Strikes out here in the fifth, and Peyton Gottschall slams. Excited to be with you this weekend. Bottom of the fifth we go, and Number seven, Sophia Nugent will step in. Lily Witten back in the circle for Missouri. And that one will run upstairs to Nugent at one and one. Missouri will have six outs to play with to stay in this one. But Missouri. Looking to keep Tennessee off the board. Lady Vols looking to add to it with a five run lead. Coming into yesterday's contest, the most runs that Missouri had given up this season was six. They did it twice already this season. This now the third time. And gave up that season high nine last night. And that one runs low to Nugent. She'll see a 3-1 on this next pitch. What Anders, Coach Anderson kept praising is how good her pitching staff is. But also, you have to give them props. This is a very good Tennessee offensive team. So they're coming in. They've struggled. I think they've left a lot of balls over the plate. Or Harrison, we saw today, she was just struggling finding that strike zone. So I just think they need to settle in, trust their pitches, trust their movement and try to keep this team off balance. A 3-1 in from Lily Witten. In for a strike at 3-2. I also wouldn't be surprised to see multiple pitchers throughout this entire weekend. I mean, this is the fourth pitcher that Missouri has thrown, but they have six pitchers on their, seven pitchers on their staff. That's a lot. We now saw four pitchers as Witten gets strikeout number one, strikeout number 13 on the season for 22 in gold. And it's the rise ball that Witten has been working with. You can see it comes up out of the zone, and you can actually see that jump on the screen. So that was a beautiful place pitch. Our new hitter into the game. The seven hole spot in the lineup was occupied by Destiny Rodriguez. And now it's Alana Leach and she'll get under that one. Racing into her left is the left fielder Maya Dodge and she'll make the grab for the second out. I think this is a nice inning for Witten. Was able to come in in the fourth, got the quick out. And now he's retired Tennessee with three in a row. I'm sure that was an interesting discussion coming to the ballpark today. One side of the family, Tennessee, one Missouri. As Katsoyanopoulos, we see that one bounced in from Witten. And there's quite a few Missouri fans out here in Tennessee. 
So they traveled well. See that Missouri section over there down the right field line. Feels like any sport, any day in the SEC, teams are gonna travel. Missouri will have a couple other road series this year in the SEC. Arkansas, Georgia, and South Carolina is where Mizzou will have to travel. And host LSU, the number two team in the country, and the only undefeated team in the country in Como next weekend. And oh yeah, they'll face one of their bitter rivals, the Kansas Jayhawks, in the midweek. The one, two. Swung on and missed, and a one, two. He only knows how with the grand slam, same as what we saw yesterday. Might as well do it in style, and a new hitter into the game, and a leadoff sliding double for number seven, Stefania Abrascato. Get things going for Mizzou. And that's what you want, first pitch. Rip it down the line. I love that Missouri is still keeping up their you can hear the energy in the dugout coming up. Look at that. She kept her hands on the inside corner, was able to open up those hips. And a beautiful slide into second base. You could tell Larissa Anderson needed a spark or a jolt of energy. She puts the freshman to the plate and lines a hard one into right field. Love to see the exit Velo on that one. And now Madison Walker will step in. Number seven in this lineup, number two on your screen. Walker, another freshman. Coach Anderson has talked so much about these freshmen, how they are bringing the energy. She said last year there were some selfish players on this team, but this year it just seems like everyone, one through nine, just loves being here, has the right intentions, and knows their role. Missouri looking to capitalize off the leadoff double by Abrascado. And give Missouri credit, they've been disciplined at the plate today. They have saw 109 pitches from Peyton Gottschall. That's the biggest difference you see today out of Missouri. They are so much more disciplined. They're allowing the ball to come into the strike zone. They're not swinging at wild, crazy pitches that we saw yesterday. And that one will be hit sky high, and Zeta Puni is there. Abrascato will stay at second, and there's one gone in the sixth. Puni getting a lot of action over at first base. You don't see too many balls hit that way, but she's... Getting into foul territory, making some big plays for Tennessee. Kind of felt for her after that leadoff double by Abrascato. She, she hit that one on a rope right near Pooney. Thankfully, it tailed away from her. But yeah, Pooney has been all over the place today for Tennessee. Good look there, 11 in those smoky gray uniforms. I already mentioned it once, a phenomenal uniform matchup today. The gray on the gold here on a Saturday. Gottschall gets that strike on the outside portion, 0-2. And, and we got to give some props to Kutzlianopoulos that's behind the plate because she's framing so well for Gottschall today, and she's getting some of those pitches that are borderline. Gottschall gets the swing and miss there. Strikeout number nine for the senior. And she's setting up her rise ball so well. She works east-west and then comes back when she's ahead in that count, throws that rise ball out of the zone, and it's so tough to lay off of. When it comes in, it looks like a home run pitch, but it just goes up over your head. From her young days in her collegiate career at Bowling Green in the state of Kentucky, She's racked up those strikeouts all in her career. And when her number was called, into that transfer portal she went, Karen Weekly answered. And I'm sure she is very pleasantly happy to have number 33 on this staff.
And with a 1-0 count, the nine hole spot in Addy Kohler due up, number 16, a new hitter in this lineup. A freshman from Tex Arcana. Seems Coach Anderson's coming up with their freshman and says, hey, let's see if you guys can do anything. Kohler swings through that one at one and two. Gotchel looking for double digit Ks here today. The active NCAA leader in strikeouts. Looking to add to it. That one runs outside, two and two. Gotchel has 208 strikeouts in a Lady Vol uniform. Make it 209. Number 10 on the day for Peyton Gotchel. And everything is cooking right for Tennessee today. And she, she did it all in SEC play. She's seen the ball. You can tell she's got that swagger up there in at the plate. I'm just trying to come up with a comparison on how she does this in, in her SEC, you know, debut weekend. But granted, she's played phenomenal opponents already this season. All sorts of opponents in the top 25 for Tennessee, but. Sometimes it just takes time. She had to come in in a tough spot at shortstop and take over starting her freshman season. And it all came after the retirement of Donahue, but Coach Weekly said she's been working with her individually outside of practice, and I think that's a big part of it is just carrying over that extra work that she's doing during practice into a game. Now, I think if you fall, you got to tell her she'll roll over that one to third, but that's going to be an E5 on the third baseman daily and a base runner for Tennessee. I think if you're Karen Weekly, and I'm sure she told her coming in, you're not going to be Mackenzie Donahue in your freshman season. No, and that's what's so good. When you play for somebody like Weekly, you're going to make adjustments. You're going to grow. And Daly just really shining over there at third. That's her third error in the last two games. Missouri two errors yesterday, now two today. And back to the top of the order for Tennessee and Kiki Malloy. Seems like Malloy hasn't hit a home run in a while. You may have just spoke it into existence. I'm sure Kiki would appreciate that. Kiki Malloy's last home run came back on March 4th against Longwood. So that was only 12 days ago. But for Kiki Malloy, you go 12 days without a home run and it feels like a month. So would you call this a hitting slump a little for her? Even with two doubles yesterday? You say hitting slump and I look up at the 429 batting average and I don't know really what to say about that. She'll club that one in the left field and it'll duck in the third baseline. Fall on her horse to third, she'll slide in. Malloy follows her and there's two on in the sixth for Tennessee. And there's a big smile out of Malloy, definitely not a hitting slump, um, but coming in, Inside pitch, she turns on it. Uses all the power that she's got. Again, these Tennessee hitters just really coming across all those pitches that are inside. And able to muscle it through to the She puts that one just on the right side of the white. And she'll stroll into second. Zeta Pooney will step in. And with a 6-1 lead in the sixth, Tennessee looking to add to it. The pitch upstairs. And Larissa Anderson will come out and chat with Lily Witten. Witten got four outs. She came in in the bottom of the fourth, got the final out of the frame for Missouri. Worked a three up, three down, fifth. And now the E5 on daily. Right now she's mostly talking to her defense and 
she's probably just coming up with a game plan like what are we going to do in this situation you have Kiki Malloy at second you have Bella Fa at third and if both of them score the game is over well no excuse me Pooney's the winning run so you really have to hold those two at second and third Run number nine would be the magic one for Tennessee to send the home fans happy today in run roll fashion. The 1-0 upcoming, and that one is in for a ball, 2-0. Some movement in that Missouri bullpen out down the right field line. We have Natalie Touche and J.C. Cruzy both warming up. And Natalie Touche is someone we saw yesterday in the circle. She did well for Missouri. And 2-0 to Poon. Outside at 3-0. Yeah, we did see Touche yesterday. Her second appearance in her freshman campaign. And what will Witten go to on a 3-0? Pooney was waiting on that one and just out in front. Pooney might not be hitting for average just yet in her senior campaign at 259, but she's got the six homers, the 18 RBI. She's 0 for 2 today, was hit by a pitch back in the first. She can end it with one swing of the bat for Tennessee. And she'll launch that one foul. And Witten's worked all the way back to run this count full. And you can tell Pooney wants to swing. She was ahead in the count, three to one. And for her to swing at a pitch that's at the letters, just tells you she wants to swing. She knows those runners are at second and third. I hope that you let that young lady keep that softball. I think they're walking out toward her. 3-2, upcoming to Pooney. And is rolled over and Fa. Nice heads up base running. She would have been in no man's land, but scoots back and then Daly picks it up and fires over to first. Daly did a great job taking a look back at Fa over there at third. And thankfully Fa didn't come too far off because that could have instantly just been a turn and tag for Daly. And then just to throw it across the diamond. So wait for her to come back after making an error over there at third. Yeah, I think one more step from Faw, and she's tagged out there at third, but wisely gets back. And now McKenna Gibson, who's one for two today with a hard hit softball back in the third. She has reached twice today for the Big Orange. The 1-0. Witten sees that one run upstairs at 2-0. You want to thank you all for joining us here on the SEC Network, ESPN app for Faith Kane. I'm Zach Nelson. Been thrilled to be with you all weekend long here in Knoxville. 11 versus 9 all weekend long. And Gibson sees that one in at a strike, 2-1. 2-0 count, and I think Gibson said she wasn't gonna take, she wasn't gonna swing that pitch coming in, but that was that was a pretty pitch down the middle. That's the one that I'd want to go after. And does Witten go right back at her? She does, and Gibson fouls that one back to the screen. Love to see the smile there in the circle. And you always got to smile when you see Smokey there in the stands. Smokey's got to be one of the best mascots in the NCAA. He's trying to enjoy him some popcorn here on a Saturday. The 2-2. Rolls in there, and the count will run full to McKenna Gibson with the dangerous Taylor panel on deck. And I just love how many fans are out here enjoying softball. You see mascot, you see the cameras around. It just shows you how much women's sports is growing just in these last couple years. They were out in 
They're campers, and that one hit left side, and it'll get over the glove of the left fielder, Abrascado. Scoring is Malloy, and Tennessee adds to that lead. It is a two RBI single for McKenna Gibson. McKenna Gibson does her job again, coming up with that double, and you can see Abrascado when she's out there in left field. Her first step she took after that ball was hit was forward. If her first step would have been back rather than jumping for that ball, she would have had a better read to make that play and save a couple runs. Just over the outreach mitt of Abrascado and Gibson's got herself a two hit day in Tennessee's. Got that eight on the board here in the sixth. I'm back, a grand slam and way to show up today. You mentioned getting back to the ballpark healthy here in 2024 has been huge for Taylor Panel. And she really blew things open for Tennessee in the fourth. Yesterday it was seven runs in the first. Today it's four runs in the fourth. Tennessee just kind of lulls you to sleep and then will open things up on you in a hurry. Looking for their second run roll victory in as many days if they can have Gibson cross home plate in the sixth. And Tennessee has just done a great job in these past two games. Their offense is really starting to put it together at the right time in this season. The 1-1. One, one. Outside, 2-1. And, and I don't know about you, Faith, and I, I know we've kind of talked about it off camera this weekend. We didn't see this coming at all. Missouri is a phenomenal program, a great team here in 2024. They came into the weekend with their best start since 2013, but they ran into a hot Tennessee team. And won now 12 in a row, looking to make it 13 today. Well, when you come in, you have Tennessee ranked nine and Missouri ranked 11th. You're expecting a game that's going to be tight. And this is SEC play. Feels like postseason play. So. You know, more amped up on both sides of the field. You have a Missouri team that just beat Auburn. And Panel just gets under that one. It'll fall in no man's land down the third base line. So this was definitely not expected, but I think this is also Tennessee making a statement. They came in, they had a big target on their back. They won the SEC last season. Now they're just trying to figure out how can we win the SEC? And then how can we win the Women's College World Series? Feels like a super regional anytime two SEC teams get together. We saw see it a lot in the actual super regionals. And Panel lines that one. And a grab made by Laird. She'll almost turn two. Unable to scoop it at first. But Gibson will trot down to second. Jenna Laird, what a play. You can't hit it towards Laird. She's going to make a play anytime it's over in her direction. She got a hop. She got up off the air. And look at that play, look at that athleticism. She had to come back, throw across her body, back in towards first, and just couldn't scoop it. Climb the ladder. Because they love that high ball so they can take it out yard. Touche came in and threw one and two thirds innings yesterday. Didn't even give up a hit to these Lady Fall bats who have been scorching hot. She dropped that 7 ERA down to 2.62 with her outing a night ago. And it's really big for Touche. Her previous appearance came almost a month ago to the day yesterday. So she pitched on February 16th against South Dakota through an inning, two hits, and an earned run. You almost wait a whole month and then pitch against Tennessee in SEC play. And then she throws her out there here two days, or the day right after. And so you gotta love that if you're Natalie Touche trying to build that confidence in her freshman season. Coach Anderson wants these freshmen to get experience and that's exactly what she's doing by throwing her out here. And I love the energy that she also brings in the circle. She'll face a new hitter, Cameron Sarvis, wears 16 for Tennessee and Sarvis will draw a walk in the sixth. Four pitches, four Cena's balls from 
a sophomore from Gray, Tennessee in Daniel Boone High School. And now Sophia Nugent, who is due up for Tennessee, but it looks like number 55, Gabby Leach, will grab a bat and hit for Tennessee. Or Mueller will trot down over to first. And and in for Sarks. And we saw our twin sister taking a bat earlier. But now it's Gabby's turn. One of the many sisters to put on the orange and white from the Leach family. Her older sister, Aubrey Leach, who had an illustrious career here at Tennessee, patrols the dugout. A nice veteran move here by Crenshaw to come out and speak with Touche. Vibes are high in that third base dugout. Gabby Leach, the freshman from the Woodlands. Sees that one in for a strike at one and one. What's so great about this Tennessee team is also how hyped they get for each other. You don't see any selfishness coming out of them. If someone gets a hit, if someone gets a big home run, you see them cheering just like they hit it themselves. You can't even tell. The 1-1. One, one. In there for a strike from Touche. And she's a strike away from getting out of the sixth and keeping this game alive for Missouri. Let's go. Drive it. We first saw that young lady, Sierra Harrison. She handed off to Lily Witten and now Natalie Touche from Mizzou. The one, two. And it's hit in the center field. Will it fall? No, of course not. Jenna Laird is there and she'll make the grab. Missouri's got three outs to work by Tennessee pitchers. So why not come to the ballpark on a beautiful afternoon and then stop by and get you some free queso at Moe's here in Knoxville. Gotcha looking to send these fans home happy as that one's gonna run in and hit number three, Jenna Laird. And this is, is the leadoff spot in the order for Mizzou. And Laird will reach base her first time today. And it looks like maybe it hit the Evo shield or not quite sure where it hit. Just ticked off that shield. Now Alex Honnold, who will step in. She's worked three walks today for Missouri. They look to keep this train rolling and trying to get Mizzou a big inning number seven. You mentioned those Evo shields. I promise you before those things were even considered, those elbows weren't dipping down trying to catch a ricochet like Lair did there. If it hurt, hit you in the elbow, you may be feeling that help for a couple days. Field, help her out. The one one yeah. works it inside in a strike call, and Gotchel's got a one two count upcoming to Honnold. And that's the pitch that she's been getting called all day. She keeps going back to that spot, and it's been su right successful for her. Go, the one two. As Honnold will throw her hands at that one and coming in to make the grab is Gabby Leach for out number one. And that was just an indecisive swing there by Honnold, especially when you are down by seven runs. You've got to step into that, into that batter's box and put a good swing on it, whether you swing and miss it or not. The Leach sisters patrolling the corners on the outfield for Tennessee. Gabby in left, Alana in right. And now number 11, Julia Crenshaw will dig in for the Tigers. And now he runs upstairs at one and one. Tennessee looking to get SEC series win number one under their belt this weekend. They have been dominant thus far against Mizzou. Crenshaw swings under that one, one and two. Looking for her 11th strikeout 
And 121 pitches in. The pitch. Just downstairs. Katsoyanopoulos wanted that one and will run it even at two and two. Even if Missouri comes out with this loss today, they did make adjustments at the plate. You saw them being more disciplined. You see a lot more energy. When I say disciplined and swinging at those rise balls that are so tough to stay off of. Missouri is nine Peyton Gottschall pitches away from doubling pitcher output from Friday to Saturday. We mentioned 69 pitches for Pickens, and Crenshaw hits that one on a rope but foul. Right here, Doctor. Big Dave, give us one right here, babe. Big Dave, give us one. 130 in for Gottschall. And that one runs outside. Missouri trying to get something going here in inning number seven. Gottschall walked the batter, or hit by pitch to the batter, Laird. Two batters are good. The 3 2. Staying alive as Missouri's tried to do all day at the hit in when, the batter's box. When you're down by seven and you're gotcha in that circle right now, all you're thinking is, I just need to throw strikes, let my defense make plays. You got seven runs to mess with. You just got to get three outs. We await the ninth pitch right, of the at bat. to Julia Crenshaw. The 3 2. Runs outside, and Missouri will get two on here in the seventh. So Missouri is keeping their hopes alive. Honnold's been seeing the ball very well today. And they're just fouling off enough pitches. Laird at Excuse me, that was Crenshaw. I apologize. You're good. As Laird's down at second, Crenshaw at first. Carried Daly in the cleanup hole. Batting fourth. And Karen Weekly will come out and speak with her infield, Megan Rhodes Smith, to the circle. If I was Tennessee right now, I think I'd just go for the double play. Play deep in the dirt. And then make that turn at second and first. Katsoyanopoulos is saying, you've had yourself a great outing. Go out there and get you a complete game and a win today. And you know, it's that competitive fire behind pitchers where it's like, this has been my game. I've came in here, I've thrown 134 pitches. I don't want anyone else coming in to finish this off. I want to do it here. I love that Coach Weekly's let her throw this entire game, even when she wasn't exactly seeing the zone. She let her stick through it. This is her game. This is her moment. But I'm sure Coach Weekly's also saying, well, if we load the bases, we've got that sophomore stud. I just threw 69 pitches yesterday. The 2-0 hit in the center and just grab made on that grass by Laura Mueller and Tennessee's one out away from winning 13 straight. Laura Mueller, she's able to move over there at second base and make some awesome plays for Tennessee. You see that ball lifted, look at her moving all the way over to second. Part of that could be because she actually grew up playing tackle football and was the running back back in her hometown. That'll toughen you up more than anything. Absolutely. Especially as a running back, you're going all over the field. I played quarterback in my young day. I'll, I'll hand it off to the running backs all day long. That's, that's a tough job. And a 
Tough job here for Maddie Gallagher. Go, One for three day, the lone runner that has crossed home plate for Missouri this weekend. Looking to keep it alive, and she is one strike away from sending Tennessee home happy. They're on their feet here at Lee Stadium. The inside pitch is the pitch that Gallagher slammed over the fence. So you can see Gottschall staying on that outside corner. This is not someone you want to go right at. She can cut this lead down to four with one swing in the back. Peyton Gottschall's had herself a day. Ten strikeouts. And the suspense will build. Missouri and Tennessee on a Saturday SEC afternoon. And Gottschall is going to have that one fouled off to the left side and a nice grab made. Where are you at? And we'll redo the 2 2. <laughs> Peyton Gottschall is delivered today. She's thrown in 141 pitches. And she'll have to add another to that count. Gallagher going up saying, I'm not going to be the last out of this game. And that's the mindset you have to have. She wants Gottschall to come on the inside corner. Gallagher will not go away quietly. And on the seventh pitch of the at-bat, she'll line that one into deep left field, and that one will hop off the wall. Leach grabs it, slamming on the brakes at third is Crenshaw, and it's an RBI double for Missouri, and they cut that lead down to six. Gallagher is seeing the ball well right now at the plate. Two outs, it's so easy as a team to kind of give up when you're down by this much, but she says, nope, I'm not going down quietly. That was another outside pitch, wasn't coming inside on Gallagher, and just drove that off the top of the wall, almost another home run. Two RBIs today for Missouri, all of them by Maddie Gallagher. And now Aberscotto, who has had the hardest hit ball we've seen all day from either side, the freshman will grab some lumber and step in. All you right here, three, all you, baby. The pitch. Upstairs and away to Aberscotto. Just makes my right arm hurt looking at 144 pitches in from Gotcha. I'm sure we'll see Carlin Pickens tomorrow with that output. And she fires in a strike there, looking for strikeout number 11 today. She's thrown a lot of pitches, but she's used to this. This is how it was when she was back at Bowling Green. She was the main workhorse. Gotchell has worked today. Gotcha. Six and two thirds. Three hits. Six walks. Ten strikeouts. Those 87 strikes. She's pounded the zone today and looking to send Tennessee off with another win. That one's inside. Count runs full at three and two. Bring her up. Let's go. Missouri will not go away quietly in the night here in the seventh. Absolutely not. They are here to fight. The 3 2. Outside, and the bases are juiced for Mizzou in the seventh. Gotchell just struggling to get this last and final out. All they need is one more. I think this is a good veteran move by Kutsoyanopoulos. The seniors out there chatting it in the circle with their infield. And if you're Peyton Gotchell, I understand the competitor behind you, but of course you don't want to give up anything. But you got a six-run lead. 
Yeah, she's just overthinking a little bit in that circle, and you can see there were smiles out there. I'm sure they actually came in that circle. Probably said a joke that had nothing to do with softball, like, hey, loosen up, we're good. Seven hole, seven hole spot, Madison Walker do up. Missouri would need to get this to the nine hole spot to keep it alive, but as Kiki Malloy's glove is shut, Tennessee slams the door.